Now, let's show that the matrices lambda that we have taken, which satisfy this property, Uh, the set of all such matrices would satisfy this equation okay so these are four by four matrices um, under the operation of matrix multiplication uh, these matrices form a group okay. and this group is called the Lorentz group so uh, this is a claim we have to actually check that this set of matrices under the operation of matrix multiplication forms a group. And the way to check it is that we check that uh, we satisfy the four properties listed above. So the first property is the property of closure. That is, if we take two matrices, lambda one and lambda two, that satisfy this equation. So uh, let's take two such matrices. then it should be true that their matrix product, that is, if we consider lambda three, okay, uh, it should be true that the matrix product satisfies the same equation. That is, we want to know, is it true that lambda three transpose dot g dot lambda three okay uh, and lambda three is of course a four by four matrix so it at least belongs to the set of four by four matrices but it should also additionally satisfy this property so that's easy to check let's take the left hand side of this equation so the left hand side is lambda 2 transpose, lambda 1 transpose, dot g, dot lambda um, 2, oops, sorry, I made a mistake here. This is going to be lambda 1 transpose, dot lambda 2 transpose, dot g, dot lambda 2, dot lambda 1. And uh, since Matrix products are associative. I can always group them together like this. And since lambda 2 satisfies this criteria, I can write this as lambda 1 transpose dot g dot lambda 1. And lambda 1 again satisfies this relationship. So this is just, okay, which is the right hand side. So this is true for any uh, product of two matrices belonging to the set, I would get back a third element belonging to the set. So the closure property is satisfied. Now, associativity is satisfied because matrix products are associative. The identity element clearly exists because I can always take this transformation or this matrix lambda. And uh, this matrix is the identity of matrix multiplication and it belongs to this set, okay, because lambda transpose dot g dot lambda, because lambda is the identity matrix, is just going to be g. So the identity exists. And uh, finally, we can argue that an inverse uh, belongs to the same set. That is, if there is an element lambda inverse, then lambda inverse must satisfy this property. Okay. 
Now, one thing that we should be clear about is this is the inverse with respect to uh, the group operation, which is matrix multiplication. So in this case, the matrix lambda inverse would just be the inverse matrix of lambda. Okay. So the only thing that we need to check is the inverse matrix of lambda actually satisfies this equation. And that's easy to do. Okay. Um, so the first thing that we need is one inverse exists and is unique. Okay, this is something that we need to check. The second thing that we need to check is that given that the inverse exists, the inverse should also satisfy this equation so that it belongs to the same set. Okay, we need to check both of these criteria. Now, uh, the inverse, uh, the existence of the inverse is not guaranteed for all four by four matrices. However, all four by four matrices with non-zero determinant definitely have an inverse. So uh, let's check what the determinant of any matrix is that belongs to the set. So if lambda belongs to the set uh, G, then lambda transpose dot G, small g dot lambda is equal to G. And so if we take the determinant of this, determinant of lambda transpose dot G dot lambda which is the same as determinant of lambda transpose determinant of g determinant of lambda is equal to g uh, sorry determinant of g the determinant of g was minus one uh, it's some non-zero number so this is uh, these just cancel out and what we get is determinant of lambda transpose determinant of lambda one and determinant of lambda transpose is the same as determinant of lambda so what we get is this so the determinant of lambda okay assuming that we're making transformations with real numbers only is either plus one or minus one okay you don't have any other choice and since the determinant of any element of this set is non-zero uh, what that means is the inverse matrix of lambda exists and is unique okay so since the determinant is non-zero lambda inverse exists and is unique it's just the inverse matrix of lambda and now we just need to check the second property that is that the inverse matrix satisfies uh, the same property so that it belongs the inverse matrix needs to belong to the same set of transformations uh, which preserve the metric okay. and uh, that's easy to see also so if lambda satisfies this relationship we can invert both sides of this equation and what that would give us is lambda inverse G inverse lambda transpose inverse is G inverse. So now let's multiply both sides of this equation by lambda transpose from the right. So that would give us lambda inverse G inverse lambda transpose inverse lambda T. And let's also multiply by a factor of G. So this would be G inverse lambda transpose. Okay. And now lambda transpose inverse times lambda transpose is just the identity matrix. And then G inverse times identity times G would just be the again the identity matrix. And so the left hand side would just be lambda inverse. And the right hand side would be G inverse lambda transpose. All right. So, what this has told us is that given the property that the matrices lambda satisfy, uh, we have now found the matrix lambda inverse explicitly in terms of lambda transpose. 
Okay. And so now that we know explicitly what the matrices lambda inverse are in terms of uh, the matrix lambda or its transpose, we can check whether the matrices lambda inverse satisfy the group uh, property, that is, they belong to the set uh, which defines this group. That is, do they satisfy this relationship over here? So let's check this relationship. So, uh, so this relationship defines lambda inverse in terms of lambda transpose. Now we want to check that lambda inverse satisfies the property that lambda inverse transpose dot g dot lambda inverse is okay so let's start with the left hand side of this equation and let's plug in uh, what we found for the expression of lambda inverse so we have g inverse lambda transpose g transpose dot g dot g inverse lambda transpose all right and uh, we can now write this as g transpose lambda g inverse uh, transpose dot g dot g inverse uh, so everything has dots between them right this is all matrix products dot lambda transpose oops um it's not lambda transpose this is just lambda because lambda transpose transpose lambda uh, in fact the last matrix lambda inverse we will just leave that as lambda inverse we won't write it in terms of uh, lambda transpose so let me just erase this and we'll just leave this in here as lambda inverse okay now the thing about g if you remember is g is this matrix with zeros everywhere else and so g inverse since this is a diagonal matrix is just going to be the same okay you can easily check this and therefore g inverse uh, transpose is also the same okay that's just equal to g uh, so G is the same as G inverse, which is the same as G transpose, which is the same as G inverse transpose. All right, so what that does is it tells us that G inverse transpose can be just written as, uh, as G inverse. So the left-hand side of our equation is just G transpose dot lambda dot lambda inverse. Uh, where I just combine these two into an identity matrix and lambda dot lambda inverse is again an identity matrix and G transpose is just G so this is just G which is the right hand side of our equation okay so we have checked that lambda inverse satisfies this equation so lambda inverse uh, belongs to G and is unique because matrix inverses are unique if they exist uh, and we've shown that they exist because the determinant of lambda is either plus one or minus one 